So today we have venom extractions from eastern diamondback rattlesnakes. These are Crotalus adamantius, or adamantius, depending on how you like to pronounce it. This one here is a relatively young one. It's about uh, three or four years old. And next up we have a couple uh, larger ones. This one here has a little bit of a strike uh, right when we uh, open the enclosure, which I think you'll be able to see right there. Here it is in slow motion. And that's just the snake saying, you know, I would rather be left alone right now. So eastern diamondbacks are one of the four species that are used uh, to make uh, crofab, which is one of the antivenoms available in the United States currently. And easterns are probably the largest rattlesnake. There's a little bit of back and forth between whether eastern diamondbacks or western diamondbacks are longer. Um, but... Eastern diamondbacks certainly are girthier uh, than westerns are typically. So, you know, in our opinion, these are actually the largest uh, rattlesnake. And uh, they are found in the southeast United States. So especially places like Georgia and Florida, um, these are not common anymore, but at one time were fairly widespread uh, throughout those southern states. And because they're very large snakes, uh, they do have a relatively large venom yield, which you'll probably be able to see here, and then also with the, the next one, which is pretty big. So they have a big venom gland. They're big snakes anyway. And this species also just tends to have a relatively large yield. So they do give quite a lot of venom uh, when they bite something, or at least are capable of giving a lot of venom when they bite something. Their venom is primarily hemorrhagic. It can cause tissue damage, it cause problems blood clotting. Uh, this one here you can see just kind of slipped out, but we don't want to really press hard enough to make that impossible uh, for them to be able to escape uh, because that way we could potentially injure the snake. So it's just enough to be able to kind of hold them for just a second so Jim can get a hold of them. And they are relatively strong snakes. Uh, just because of the girth that they have. And here, once again, you'll be able to see the relatively large yield that these guys have. This one has a pretty good size head on it. And now we have a couple other younger ones in this video. So uh, these are uh, siblings of the very first snake in this video. So these are around three or four years old. And even though they're not as big, they do still uh, have enough venom to contribute, so they're worthwhile extracting from. We tend to not start extracting from something until it's about two years old. It depends a little bit on the species and what the purpose of the extractions are, uh, but that gives them some time to grow up and, and also actually produce some significant amount of venom. It's just a little bit different viewpoint because I thought it might be fun to see. These guys are kind of well known for having a symbiotic relationship with the gopher tortoise. Uh, they do tend to inhabit the burrows of gopher tortoises and will use them for shelter and potentially also to find food, but probably more as a refuge from uh, the heat during the day and also to escape from potential predators. So the relationship between them and gopher tortoises is actually pretty tight. And they do rely on the, those burrows quite a bit along with many, many other species. As always, we really appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy seeing our videos and want to see more of them when we post new ones. Uh, everybody have a fantastic day.